Klaus and welcome to the Busan Midnight Movie. I'm your host Donald and this is our last episode. That's right, this is the final episode because it takes a lot of time to make these things and I want to work on something else. Oh, wait, I just made ending the show my fault instead of blaming someone. If I'd said I'd been canceled, I could have milked an easy income from whiny piss baby Republicans for the rest of my life. Oh well. Tonight's feature is one body too many, but first we have a recap of every episode of Zoro's Black Whip. Last time, Barbara staged a breakdown to get some alone time with James Bradley, but Vic arrived to play the third wheel. Bandits showed up and shot Bradley, but were chased off by the Black Whip, who also got shot. Before he died, Bradley admitted he and Vic had been longtime partners and gave his blessing to Vic and Barbara becoming a couple. Later, the Black Whip succumbed to his own injuries and died, leaving Barbara to take over the family jobs of newspaper editor and bondage accessory spokesperson. Bandits tried to hijack a shipment with a new newspaper press and captured Vic in the process. Barbara, as the Black Whip, chased the bandits down, but not before they sent the cart with both Vic and the new press careening over a cliff. Last time, Vic escaped his doom through a shot not included in the previous episode. He receives an obscene phone call and ends his date with Barbara early to take the caller up on the offer. When Vic finds the wrong kind of rough trade, he has to be saved by Barbara in her guise as BDSM queen, the Black Whip. Meanwhile, the scheming Mr. Hammond is exploring power games with his men when the Black Whip interrupts. She gets locked inside a vault with a keg of gunpowder that proceeds to explode. Last time, the Black Whip escaped from a sealed vault with an exploding keg by closing an extra door. Vic was accused of robbing Mr. Hammond's safe and arrested. Barbara recycled footage to see if she could remember the path the real bandits took in the previous episode and maybe reclaim the stolen money. Meanwhile, a mob of the worst actors gathered to lynch Vic, struggling to decide which of their wooden performances would serve as the gallows. The Black Whip managed to steal the money back from the bandits but was knocked from her horse on her way back to town. Last time, Vic was saved from hanging when the Black Whip delivered one of the real thieves. Vic then tried to take the bandit on a romantic carriage ride, but was interrupted by the thief's cohorts. The driver got shot, and Vic was knocked out, sending yet another carriage careening out of control. Last time, Vic survived falling over a cliff in a carriage by... Surviving falling over a cliff in a carriage! Then the bandits followed the Black Whip back to Barbara's house and held her at gunpoint, but she stayed frosty and freed herself with sewing scissors. Vic and the Whip ended up at the Bandit's hideout, where the Bandits held Vic at gunpoint, demanding that the Whip remove her mask. Last time, BDSM icon the Black Whip escaped having her identity revealed by snatching the Bandit's gun, like the writers just stopped caring about the drama. Barbara and Vic meet Prospector Zeke after he struck gold, and then Barbara invites Vic to dinner while making suggestive hand gestures. Hammond sends his goons to jump Zeke's claim, but Vic and Barbara arrive just in time to save him. Vic sends Zeke to rest in his tent, and Hammond's goons throw a lit keg of gunpowder at it after the Black Whip goes inside. Last time, the whip escaped being blown up by walking through the other side of the tent, while Vic woke up to be a useless grinning idiot. Then the writers got bored and decided to send everyone out of town. Wide shots of a wagon train being attacked ensue, and the whip got knocked off a cliff when she arrived to help. Last time, the whip fell off a cliff into a passing wagon, and Vic got tied up the way he liked. Then the writers went on holiday, and we got a clip show of Vic being useless. Hammond has Vic taken prisoner to force Barbara to reveal the identity of the whip. When she sneaks back to untie him, the bandits spot her and open fire on what's obviously just her boots at the bottom of some curtains. Last time, bandits opened fire on a pair of boots sitting under a curtain. Then Hammond realized that Barbara is the Black Whip because the writers had just given up. Vic literally fell into the cave of the Black Whip and did what he'd always dreamed of doing, put on Barbara's clothes. He went to rescue Barbara and got beat up. Then the bandits set off a landslide, collapsing the hideout with Vic and Barbara inside. Last time, Vic and Barbara escaped a landslide by climbing out a window that seems wouldn't have helped them escape. The bandits steal all the horses from the surrounding areas, and Vic uses one of the bandits' horses to find their hideout. Vic is almost competent, but that's just a fake out, and Barbara has to save him because, side note, Barbara is a badass. However, in the fight, Barbara gets pitchforked by one of the bandits. Last time, the Black Whip was stabbed with a pitchfork. We saw her legs twitch. She was dead, but somehow Vic threw a saddle between the whip and the pitchfork at the last minute, saving her life. Vic and Barbara set up a plan to make Hammond reveal himself, but Vic gets captured, because he's useless. The Whip goes to save Vic, but they get trapped in a tunnel with an exploding oil barrel. Last time, Vic and the Whip survived being trapped in a tunnel with an exploding oil barrel by climbing into a minecart like it was a fridge in a nuclear explosion. Hammond got caught, but escaped from horny jail just before the citizens descended for the erotic election. When Hammond learned he was about to lose the election, he gathered his band of sovereign citizens to stop the steal. The whip arrived with reinforcements, but Hammond tracked her back to her hideout to take revenge, only to get stomped to death by her horse. Idaho became a state, Vic remained useless, and because there was just a minute left, the serial finally became racist. Twelve episodes and not one appearance from Zorro. Anyway, tonight's feature is One Body Too Many. 
Millionaire Cyrus J. Rutherford has left his fortune to his various relatives, but only if his body is entombed the way he requested. Insurance salesman Albert Tuttle finds himself tasked with guarding the body against those looking to steal it to undo the will, even if they have to kill to achieve their goals. I found this movie almost exactly 13 years ago when I was hunting down public domain films to upload to the Internet Archive. This little noir comedy caught me completely off guard. I'd never heard of it and found it to be really charming. Plus, this Bella Lugosi has a butler who seems so heartbroken that he can't poison all the guests. Having worked in the service industry, I understand completely. Since this is the final episode, for the moment at least, I wanted to end with something special. So without further ado, tonight's feature, One Body Too Many. Tonight, Dot's cousin just got into town, and you and I... I already have an engagement. I've had it for over a month with Cyrus J. Rutherford. Cyrus J. Rutherford? The screwball millionaire? Eccentric. You can't call a man with $8 million a screwball. I can. All that hocus-pocus about the stars and building a private, uh, what do you call it, on top of his house? Observatory. He just happens to believe in the influence of the stars on human behavior. <laughs> the only stars that could influence my behavior would be Dorothy Lamar or Veronica Lake. Say, every big company in town's taking a shot at Rutherford. How'd you swing it? Leo. Leo? Leo who? The star. You see, I wrote and told her that I was born under the sign of Leo. That's his lucky star. And he wrote right back and made the appointment for the 13th, which is today, when Leo's in the ascendancy. You mean to say you believe in that guff, too? I believe in selling insurance. Tuttle, the way you keep that nose to the grindstone, you're going to wear out the grindstone. <laughs> you can laugh. Wait till I come back here with Mr. Rutherford's name on that policy. Quiet, please. I, Cyrus J. Rutherford, being of sound mind and body, do hereby declare the following to be the preamble to my last will and testament. <clears throat> the disposition of my estate is of only slightly less interest to me than it is to you, my loving heirs. It has been divided among you. The largest share is to be $500,000, and the smallest, $1.50 to pay for the taxi from the station. So pay close attention, all of you. My sister Estelle, who disobeyed my wishes 20 years ago by marrying a nincompoop, named, I believe, Kenneth, and whom I've had the pleasure of not seeing since. Cyrus never changed a bit. And niece Margaret, whom I have never seen, which is probably just as well. I like that. My nephew, James Davis. I last saw him when he was an impertinent youth of 20. I do not like impertinence, and I did not like James. My niece, Carol Dunlap, although I despised her father, turned out to have somewhat better intelligence and a less selfish interest in her old uncle than others in the family. And the last of my living relatives, Nephew Henry Rutherford and his wife, Mona. Henry, at least, has the virtue of bearing the Rutherford name, and he was a fairly good investment counselor, honest as far as I could find out. Mona wears too much makeup. I told you he didn't. Oh, like shut it. up. Go on, Mr. Gelman. And she seems to have waited with undue impatience for my demise. My faithful butler, Merkel, who for 20 years padded the household bills and Matthews, who kept house for me in a haphazard sort of way. Professor Hilton, 
to whom I owe my knowledge and understanding of the secrets of the heavens. And finally, my lawyer, Morton Gelman. Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, that's about all, folks. The rest is just routine. Go ahead and read it. We're all just one big happy family. Yes, yeah, so let's ahead. hear it. We want it. Whom I trust implicitly as far as I can throw an elephant. As you know, I have been an ardent student of the stars. I want to continue to be exposed to them. Therefore, I wish to be interred not underground, but in a glass-domed vault where they will evermore continue to shine down upon me. You are all to remain here as my guests until this vault is completed. After I have been safely interred, you may open my will, which is now sealed in the safe in the specimen room. Then you will learn how I have seen fit to reward you, one and all. But should this, my last wish, be disobeyed, and my body buried anywhere except in the above-mentioned vault, then the terms of the will shall be reversed, and those who are to get the large bequests will get the smallest, and vice versa. Furthermore, should any of you leave the grounds before I am safely interred in my vault, you will forfeit all rights to your legacies. I know you will find it difficult to live together, even for a few days, but this is my wish. So with these last words, I leave you to your squabbling, which fortunately, I won't be able to hear. Of all the insulting and insane ideas. Yeah, but it'll never hold up in a court of law. Please, please. It's all perfectly legal. They'll start work on the vault tomorrow. It should only be a matter of a few days. Looks as if you and I are in for the lion's share. You mean from what Uncle Cyrus said? Oh, this place gives me the creeping memes. I wish it were over with. You don't have to stay. Have you read the final will? Do you know who gets what? He drew it up himself. And nobody will read the will until he is properly interred. Well, if yeah, I no, let's yeah. not stand around in the presence of Uncle Cyrus's body and call about his will. I wouldn't call either if I'd spent 20 years stooging for a slice of it. I resent that. I meant you to, dear cousin. You would all like some coffee. Uh, very well. You'll serve it in the library, Matthews. Am I taking orders from you now? You are. Do, as Mrs. Rutherford say, Matthews, until the actual bill is read. What do you mean by that? Exactly nothing, madam. Nothing at all. Excuse me, I'll straighten the room. Atlas Detective Agency? I have a job for you. What? You want to hire a man to guard a stiff? Yes, I want you to see that he isn't buried. Hey, look, is this a gag? His body must not be disturbed. That's right. You want the job or don't you? We'll keep your friend on ice. Just pay my man the first hundred dollars when he gets there. All right. I'll be expecting you in about an hour. Who? Uh, can I play too? I beg your pardon. Well, that's all right. I was just going to have a quiet six or eight drinks if you will tell me which is to be my room. Well, I could even show you, unless you'd rather drink alone. Mrs. Rutherford. Mona. Well, well, what have we here? Oh, come on, Kenneth. I've got a headache. Does anyone see Professor Hilton? He's up in the tower, I imagine, communing with the stars. Well, just to set everyone's mind at rest, I've engaged a watchman to spend the night with the casket. That's a swell idea. It'll save us the trouble of watching each other all night. What have you there, Merkel? There are too many rats in this house. They should be done away with. You haven't put out enough cups. Mr. and Mrs. Rutherford, are they to have it too? 
all of them. Will you open the door, please? I brewed some coffee, sir, but I can't find anyone in the library. Well, they're probably all retired. Wouldn't you care for some, sir? No, it keeps me awake. I assure you, this coffee will not keep you awake. No, thank you. No, thank you, Michael. Very well, sir. Right. And don't let the stiff take a powder on you. Huh? <laughs> Creepy joint. I hope this job don't last long. You left in the hall closet downstairs. Oh, yes, thank you. Just put it there. Yes, ma'am. I was very considerate of you. Not at all. I hope you'll be comfortable. I'm sure I will. Good night. Good night. Leave this house at once if you value your life. That must be the detective driving up. Thank goodness for that. Yes, I know. This way, sir. Nice place you have here. Yes, sir. Oh, I've been trying to get here for so long. I tell him you're here, sir. Thank you. Say, that... I wouldn't have slept in wink all night if you hadn't. Well, thanks. That's awfully kind now, of you. You don't look a bit like I expected. I don't? No. I thought you'd be more rugged looking. You know, that lady... 
Why do I have to look rugged? Well, I don't mean that you aren't. I, I just mean that you don't look it. I suppose under your coat, you're a massive muscle. <laughs> just shows how deceptive appearances can be. Oh, I don't think my appearance is so deceptive. Now you're being modest. But then I've heard that people who lead dangerous lives usually are. Well, it, it isn't so dangerous, but uh, once in a while you run into a rough customer who tries to throw you out, but mostly it's just routine. Oh, I wouldn't call it routine to go tracking people down so they can shoot at you. Oh, no one's ever gone that far. Although one time a fellow tried to cancel his wife's life. Oh, how horrible. What did you do? I talked him out of it. Besides that, I got him to take out an annuity for her. <laughs> oh, you must be very brave. Oh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. How do you do? I'm Morton Gelman, Mr. Rutherford's lawyer. Pleased to meet you. Your duties have been explained to you? Mr. Gelman, I've been in this business for over 12 years. Good, then you should know what to do. Here's your money. Oh, I couldn't take any money yet, really. This is just the first payment. You'll get the rest later if everything goes off satisfactorily. Well, I'm quite sure it will. Of course, uh, he has to be examined by the doctor. Well, that's all been taken care of. You just do your part. We'll take care of the rest. Here you are. Well, this is a little bit irregular, but I guess it'll be all right. He's in there. You'll just sit with him all night. I'll sit with him. I'll right. be upstairs if you should want me. May I show you in, sir? Well, I guess so, yes. Uh, goodbye, Miss... Dunlap. Pleased to have met. Met. We haven't met yet. My name is Tuttle, Albert Tuttle. I'm Carol Dunlap. His niece. How do you do? How do you do? Would you care to have a cup of coffee first, sir? Yes, I... Would. What kind of coffee is this? The very best, sir. No, I mean there are two classes of coffee drinkers. There's the percolated, then there's the drip. This is percolated. Sorry, I'm a drip. <laughs> well, excuse me. Yes. Good luck, Mr. Tuttle. Don't worry, Mr. Rutherford won't get away from me tonight. This way, sir. How's Mr. Rutherford looking these days? He never looks better, sir. Fine. He's in there. Thank you. I'm Albert L. Tuttle of the Emperor. What are you talking about? He's in there right in the corner. I just put my briefcase right on his face. What's going on here? What's the disturbance? They don't seem to understand. Mr. Rutherford, he's in there. Deceased, dead. What'd you think he was, dozing? Uh, you mean you knew it all the time? Why else would I hire you to watch the body? Watch it. I came here to sell it. Him. Uh, life insurance. Who ever heard of selling a dead man life insurance? I don't want to sell him now. <laughs> Say, who are you anyway? Albert Tuttle of the Emperor Life Insurance. I had an appointment, Mr. Rutherford. I've had it for over a month. I was going to sell him a $200,000 policy and get my gold pin. Why didn't you say so? What are you doing going around posing as a detective? I wasn't posing as anybody. I came here to see Mr. Rutherford, and I've seen him, and I'm going to get out of here. Not with my $100. I don't want your money. I didn't want it in the first place. Here. Your hat and coat, I sir. don't want my hat and coat. I didn't... Oh, excuse me. I hope whatever you're worried about turns out all right when the real detective gets here. Maybe he isn't coming. Maybe they just said that. I wouldn't put it past them. I don't quite follow you. I'm afraid to talk here. Oh. Excuse me. If you're worried about staying here, I'd be very happy to drive you into town. I have to stay. Oh, I feel quite sure everything will turn out all right. I know something's going to happen. I wish you'd stay. What could happen with all those nice people here? Well, goodbye. Look out!
get away from here before you get yourself killed. Wait a minute, pal. Wait a minute. You're going to pass up a bet like that. Pipe that doll. You could be a hero. Go now while you've got both legs. This is none of your business. Don't listen to that side of you. Get in there and pitch. Look at those eyes. Look at those. Stop it. Stop it. She's luring you to destruction. She'll try flattery next. She'll say, you saved my life. You're wonderful. Oh, you saved my life. You're wonderful. What did I tell you? Eh. Uh, oh. You're hurt. Nah, it was just a bump. Well, you all right? Yeah. Oh. Well, goodbye. Oh, please don't go. Oh, it was just an accident. No, it wasn't. Someone tried to kill me, I know it. They said they would and they'll try it again. Here, will you read this? Somebody put it in my bag. Leave this house at once uh, if you value your life. Well, goodbye. Hey, that's really on the level. Somebody tried to... Whose room is up there? Well, that's the tower, I think. The tower, eh? Somebody tried to kill you, eh? Well, I'll show him he can't go around throwing rocks on people. I'll go up there and I'll get him in my hands and I'll, I'll tear him apart. Hey, now, please don't. You might get hurt. It's a good thing you talked me out of it. Then you'll help me? Well, uh... Please. Well, uh... Well... Mr. Tuttle, Professor Hilton. You mind if we look around, Professor? And I'm busy. Constellations changing. Venus approaching Jupiter. It must be very interesting for Jupiter. Go right ahead. We won't get in your way. Uh, careful. You might get a, a long way down. How did that stone get loose? Stone? Stone? Oh, yes, yeah, stone. Thought I heard. Uh, afraid to look. Uh, heights make me um, uh, uh, vertigo, uh, dizzy. It's funny for an astrologer. Up, yes. Look up, I like that. Down, no. It, it goes to my uh, 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 dizzy. Professor, I was almost killed by that stone. You don't seem very interested. What will be, will be. It's all in the stars. May I look at your hand? Palms, poppycock, bungum. Don't believe in reading palms. Depends on what you see there. There's dirt on yours. How did it get there? Uh, uh, my pencil. Rolled underneath the telescope. Uh, dusty under there. Very dusty. Mm. Well, uh, excuse us. Thank you. He looked harmless enough, but there was dirt on his hands. Well, maybe someone came around the parapet when he wasn't looking and loosened the stone. Why should anyone want to harm you? I don't know. Uncle Cyrus left kind of a peculiar will. Hasn't been read yet. But if I'm one of the ones that gets a bigger share, somebody wants to get me out of the way. Could have been an accident. Accident? Say, are you covered for falling stones? I don't think so. Well, if one stone fell, another could work loose. And it would be a good thing to be covered. Let's see now. Oh, the detective. I wonder why he didn't show up. Hmm? Atlas Detective Agency. Canal 60598. 
They don't answer. Maybe they're on a special case, something like murder or something. What are you doing here? I thought you'd left. Well, you see... You wanted a... someone to watch the body. The detective didn't show up, so Mr. Tuttle said he'd do it. I did? Him? He. What? He, not him. It's a common mistake. You see, him is objective. I'm sure your grammar is excellent, Mr. Tuttle, but I'm afraid you won't make a very good watchman. I'm afraid so, too. Well, he's better than no watchman at all, isn't he? Besides, I think he's very nice to say he'd do so. Who? Who? Who are... Very Who's... well. I wash my hands of the whole responsibility. From now on, it's on your own head. On my head? Now, Mr. Gellman, there's oh, a mistake here. It's very kind of you. I'll be able to sleep now. Good night, Albert. Good night, Carol. Good night, Mr. Gellman. Good night. I guess it'll be all right. I'll uh, sit here and make myself comfortable. In there. In there? I don't need anybody to watch out here. Uh, but, uh, oh, Mr. Gellman, uh, would you like to play a little dominoes? No. Send a game? No. gloomy house was dark except for the light by which McGarity was reading. Outside a storm was brewing. Inside the painful silence held a promise of violence and death. In the distance the first faint rumble of approaching thunder was heard. The very emptiness of the room held menace. To Inspector McGarity's alert ears no sound was too slight to be heard. The ticking of the clock, almost in rhythm with the beating of his own heart. The wind slammed a shutter against a window. But Garrity knew that the hour was at hand. Quietly, a secret panel opened in the wall behind him. Two hands with fingers curved like the claws of a predatory animal reached toward his throat. Feeling vaguely that something was amiss, McGarity glanced around. The hands withdrew. When they reappeared, they held a handkerchief to jam down his throat and snuff the breath from his lungs before he could cry out. struck down Sir Ogilvy would strike again that night. But Garrity's premonition was well founded. For at that very moment, the murderer looking behind him was preparing to kill the famous detective in cold blood. Ah, trash. Things like that don't happen.
are down. Control yourself. It's only a scratch. You should have such a scratch. Never mind that. What happened? Oh, I don't know. The lights went out and somebody hit me. Then the lights went out. There it is. What is it? It's my blood. That's what I was hit with. Both doors are locked from the inside. It's someone right here in this house. Where were you five minutes ago? Oh, don't be so nosy. I was with them. Why? What's the matter? You got a headache? Maybe you can tell us what's the matter. Someone attacked him. It's my blood. We were upstairs having a nightcap. Kenneth Hopkins, you promised you'd only have one drink. It's cold up there in bed. Who's this? Mr. Tuttle was acting as watchman to be sure that no one steals the... He's gone. Well, uh, oh, maybe he went out for a little walk. This is no joking matter. How did this happen? Do you realize what this means if he's buried underground? I thought you were getting a watchman. Somebody knocked him out. And I thought you were an insurance salesman. Well, I am. I mean, uh, I was. You see, I just stayed to help out. There's something fishy about you. First you come here with a story we can't check. And you worm yourself in as a watchman. Henry, if you're insinuating that Albert had anything to do with it, well, I asked him to stay. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Albert. Suppose you lay off the third degree with Carol. Somebody stole Uncle Cyrus's body, and I'm going to find out who before it's too late. But why would anyone want to steal the body? Because of my client's will. He wanted to be interred in a glass top vault so the stars would shine down on him. He didn't want to be buried any other way. If he is, then his bequests will be reversed. Those who want to get the larger share will get the smaller and vice versa. Oh, I see. Then somebody sold the body so that they could bury it and reverse the will. But then that would mean that they knew it was in the will. And nobody does, do they? I wonder. Cut out the wisecracks or I'll let you have it. Oh, I think you're taking a lot for granted, Henry. No one has read the will. The body must still be here in the house and we've got to find it. I beg pardon. With everybody's nerves are on edge. I suggest that you all have some coffee. No, no. Oh, no. yes, Merkel, I'll have some. Thank you. No, I like drip. Well, maybe Uncle wasn't stolen. Maybe he's hiding. I can see why he didn't like you. And I'll tell you right now what I think. What? That you and Kenneth, who undoubtedly are down for the smallest share, have stolen it. Why, you two-bit heel. I've been wanting to do this for 20 years. Oh, Albert! Oh, no, I hit the jackpot. Yes. Uncle Cyrus' body. Take it away, somebody. Take it away. Oh. Listen, Tuttle. I've got an idea how we can catch the body snatcher. If it works. Get someone else. My head is killing me. You're the only one who can do it. Now, listen. Please, just let me lie here quietly and bleed. All you've got to do is to pretend you're fed up. You're scared. Pretend I'm scared? What do you think I'm shaking from, enthusiasm? You quit. Then, when the coast is apparently clear, whoever it was might come back and try again. Then you catch them. We catch them. We? By that time, I'll be in my bed. Oh, no. You only pretend to leave. Then you sneak in through the French windows and you lay for them. Listen, I'm not covered for going in through windows. I mean, in case of glass breakage. There's nothing to it. I'll be right here waiting for you, and you'll be waiting in the coffin. Oh, I'll be... Coffin? Don't you think it'll be a little bit crowded in there? We'll hide the real body. Oh. I get a better idea. Let the body stay there and let me hide. Look, you want to help, don't you, for Miss Dunlap's sake? Well, I didn't figure on going that far. Good. Now, you start your act as soon as we get out in the hall. Now, wait a minute. I want to talk to Miss Dunlap first. 
I don't want her to think I'm a coward, even if I am. Absolutely not. You mustn't tell anyone. If anything went wrong, she'd be open to suspicion. Oh, I didn't figure... If anything went wrong... Nothing will go wrong. Why don't you stop worrying? You sure this is all right? Yes. Remember now, you pretend you're leaving. Then I'll let you in again through the French windows. But make it convincing. I can't stand much more. That body falling on Albert. Ooh. I've had enough of this. I'm going home. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. Albert! That is the way I feel about it. I am going home. I don't care what you say, Mr. Gelman. I'm leaving. After all, I've been popped in the head and punched around and pushed around. Albert! Why should I stay? Next time, I might get killed. And I'm too young to get killed. That's a very sensible attitude. A very sensible attitude, Mr. Tuttle. After all, it's not my affair. You said so yourself, Carol. I came here to sell your Uncle Cyrus insurance. As long as nobody's interested in insurance, I'm leaving. Eh? Well, goodbye, Carol. Goodbye, Albert. Oh, well, uh... I... I don't blame you for going, but... Well, maybe we'll meet again sometime in town. Maybe. And if we do, there'll be something I want to say. What? Goodbye. So the others were too. They're all asleep now. Come on. Can I sit here a while and defrost? Come on, we've got work to do. Hold that. I don't think we ought to try it again. Too risky. Well, we got rid of that screwball, didn't we? There's nothing to stop us now. Do you think we're doing the right thing? Suppose we get rid of the body and find out we've reversed the will in somebody else's favor. Yes. What about that? Don't be asinine. Uncle Cyrus didn't like any of us well enough to leave us a pig's bristle. I'm for taking my chances on reversing the will and getting a good share. All right, I'm with you there. But what was the goofy idea of moving the body? I thought he was plenty comfortable in the cellar, where we put him first. Are you serious? I thought you and your pop put him behind the living room panel. We thought you did. Hey, wait a minute. Either you two are giving me a runaround or somebody else is playing put-and-take. I wonder who. Well, stop wondering. This time we'll stash Uncle Cyrus' body where nobody will ever find it. Get your coats. What for? We're gonna take a little hike. But I... And stop nursing that bottle. Come on, Dad. Come on, hurry it up, will ya? Tonight's feature is One Body Too Many, and I don't have too much to say about it other than to note that the star, Jack Haley, also played the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. Yes, that Wizard of Oz. This film was the second of four films he made for Pine Thomas Productions, a company that previously had specialized in war and action films. Their films with Jack Haley were their first foray into comedies and musicals, and considering that they never lost money on a production, I guess they did pretty well. Also of note is the female lead, Jean Parker. Parker is an actor who worked extensively but never quite broke out. In 1944, the same year she did this movie, she appeared in six other films, including the first of two Kitty O'Day features. The whole crew of actors here is pretty good, so let's get back to enjoying their work in One Body Too Many. Think you'll be safe in there? Of course. You'll be watching. Yeah, I'll be what. Here, hide the key. Come on. Tuttle. Get your coat off and get in. Say, I have an idea. Suppose I hide in the specimen room with you. No, that's no good. Get in. It doesn't look comfortable. Why not? It's padded. Yeah, so is the cell. Come on, now, get in. Now, wait a minute. Don't rush me. Uh, are you sure it's safe? I'm not worried about that. You're not worried. No need of both of us worrying. Come on.
Come, come now. I haven't got very much time. Oh. Don't lock it. Of course not. Mr. Gelman. What is it now? Could you get me a glass of water? <laughs> I got he cups. <laughs> Hold your breath. That'll cure you. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> I saw those windows move. You shouldn't have had that last drink. Go ahead, open them. Well, come on, let's get him out of here. What's locked? Guess we'll have to take the whole box. You take that other end. No such a thing. Your foot must have slipped. Look, do I have to carry this thing myself? Come on, I'm freezing. Well, what do you say to this for a ready-made grave? Nobody will ever find it in the pool.
to you. Oh, it was that Gelman. He's the one that talked me into this. Wait a minute, there's something here. Oh, it's a goldfish. Oh. Wait till I get my hands on that. That lawyer. You mean you think that Gelman... Perfectly is... safe, he said. Nothing could happen to me. Why, it's as simple as a straight life insurance policy. You know what? Oh, what's that, my pa? Oh. 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 Wait. Gelman. Sure, it was Gelman. He knew I wouldn't leave you here all alone, so he cooked up that scheme just to get me out of the way. Even made me get in that coffin. Then after he and his accomplices had gotten me out of the way, he thought he'd have a clear field. But let me tell you... Uh-oh. What are you doing? I want to see if they had time to steal the body while I was drowning. You mean the body's in there? Yeah, it's still... Ow! It's Gelman. Rutherford's gone and he's in there dead. Mother! Well, I don't think he... He'd exactly hang himself on a coat hook to commit suicide, or would he? Oh, oh don't leave me! Hello? Hello? Mr. Gilman, dead. This is dead, too. There, there, there. Now, now, don't get scared. Oh, but I am scared, Albert. Aren't you? Who, me? I've been scared since 8.30. What are we gonna do? There's a murderer in this house. Three of them. Any one of us might be next. Not if we catch them first. How? I'll show them. I'm through being pushed around. I've been bop, clopped, and clunked. I'll show them that they can't drown Albert Tuttle and get away with it. I'll call them all down here, and, and we'll grill them. Grill. That reminds me. I'm hungry. Me too. I think we ought to... We ought to fry this and eat it. Oh, Albert. What about the murderers? Let them catch their own fish. I made a joke. Yes. Poor Mr. Gilman. Why would anyone want to kill him? Never mind that. Then what? Well, then we came back here and we went to the closet and there he was. Dead. What about my uncle? Where is he? We'd better find a body before it's buried. How can you be so cold-blooded? A man's been murdered, and all you can think about is your inheritance. Whoever stole the body was thinking about it too. That same person murdered Gelman. There were three of them. I saw them. You saw them? Why didn't you say so? Who were they? It was dark. I couldn't tell. You couldn't tell? Mirko. Yes, sir. Do you always sleep fully clothed? Uh, no, sir. Then what are you doing dressed at this hour of the night? I was waiting for the next occurrence. Oh, then you knew something was going to happen. Well, didn't it? Having already been aroused once before, I thought it would save time if I remained in my room and called. Is that how the mud got on your shoes? Waiting in the room? I stepped out to let the cat in, out of the rain. What rain? What rain? The rain that's falling down, sir. What is the trouble? I heard the commotion. Where were you, Professor? Watching Venus under the rain. Mr. Gelman has been murdered. Well, you're not surprised. Surprised? No. Not even at murder? No such a thing. Foreordained. Mr. Gelman in the shadow. An unlucky star. Very unlucky. Well, if the stars can tell you all that, perhaps they can also tell you who killed him. No. I am a scientist, Mr. Turtle. It's Tuttle. Not a detective. I can tell you this, though. Do not make too many plans for a birthday party yourself. You are under the influence of a very precarious star. Very precarious, Mr. Tittle. It's Tuttle. My car is outside. I'm going for the police. You'll never get there. Why not? I'm begging your pardon, sir. But the bridge over the creek was washed out. I saw it from the tower. No one can get in or out. Then I'll walk. Suit yourself, sir. But the nearest telephone would be about ten miles in the rain. Why do we waste time answering a lot of questions? We'd better start looking for Uncle's body. You look for him. I'm going up and lock myself in my room till the police come. Come along, Kenneth. Me too. I didn't come here to spend all night on a treasure hunt. Aren't you going to give us a clue? While we're on the subject, where were you when all this went on? I was in bed. Is that right? 
I suppose so. You suppose so? We have separate rooms. Well, naturally. I'm going to help them look. After all, I started... You should get out of those wet clothes before you catch your death. Oh, stop using that word. I'm all right. <coughs> There's a vacant room next to mine. It was Uncle Cyrus's. You're going to use it. Come on. Oh. Would you like some coffee, Mr. Tuttle? It's Tuttle. A Tuttle. No, thank you. Madam? I don't need anything to keep me awake. None for me, thanks. No. If you find anything, call me. I'll be in my room. That'll be a novelty. on me, are you? Oh, don't be silly. We were all together. Except when you went for your coat. Stop it. Somebody else wants the will changed even more than we do. Enough to commit murder. my teeth. I'll find Jim. Get your drink. I don't care.
Kick in. Yeah, I wonder whose it was. Who cares? I'm gonna sing a song about a murder. Who are you shushing? I guess I can sing if I want it, can't I? Soldier, better hide the bottle before they start squawking. Where'll I put it? There's the spot. Nobody'll be the wiser. Well, just one more little drink, and then you go make shut eye. Thank you. 
Is he? I'll give you till the count of three to come out. One, two, three. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Uh, oh, Carol, I can explain everything. It's uh, <laughs> embarrassing, isn't it? Scream like that, your skin. Mr. Tuttle, what are you doing here? Well, I heard footsteps. They sound as if they came from up here. I heard them too. I'd have sworn they came from right over my head. I guess there's nobody else here. Must have been the wind. We better go back before someone else hears us and start shooting. Yes, we'd better. Oh, if you get frightened, I'm. Right across there, you call me. That's a big help. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good evening. Did you sell any insurance? Now listen, Carol. Done that to you. No matter what you're thinking, I'm innocent. I was just taking her back to her room. Then I was going to my room. Oh, you've had a busy night. You mean when I get into Margaret's room? That wasn't my fault either. Why, you Casanova. Oh, you got me all wrong. I got into her room to her mother's room. I was lost. Well, if you don't believe me, perhaps you'll believe Mrs. Rutherford. Mrs. Rutherford! You don't have to explain. I only know what I see. She doesn't answer. Mrs. Rutherford! All the racket, pounding on walls, scream. How did this happen? I don't know. I was with her a few minutes ago. Mona. Mona! I'll kill you for this. Let me go. I'll kill you. I know it's My way. Wait a minute. I don't know what this is all about. You don't think I had anything to do with it? That's absurd. I just took her back to her room and I didn't even go in. That's Carol. She saw me come out. I, I mean... Uh, I thought you said you didn't go inside. I didn't. I just... I just looked around to make sure that there was nobody there. Then you were inside. Oh, that doesn't prove anything. Suppose he was inside. Then he was the last person to see her alive. He just admitted it. I didn't. Anybody could have gotten in here. How? Through the panel. There's a spring here. You just touch it and this... this panel opens. There's a secret passage in back of it. It's there someplace. Save that for the police. Only the next time you better make it better. Police? I came here to sell insurance. Brother, you better have some. Oh, Jim, what right have we got to judge? Look, Carol, a murder's been committed. Two murders. By his own admission, he was the last person to see both murdered people alive. Then he pulls this phony story about a secret panel, only there's no panel. And Uncle Cyrus' body is still missing. I'll bet he stole it. 
I didn't have anything to do with it. I came here to sell insurance. Why should I go around killing people? Well, that's something else for the police to find out. Let's lock him up before he has a chance to kill somebody else. Now, wait Come a minute. On, you. Wait uh, a minute. I'm innocent. You can't do this to me. I tell you, I'm innocent. Listen to the tower, Michael. Yes, sir. What are you going to do to me? We're locking you in here. Yeah, here's the key. I wish you'd listen to me. The real murderer is still at large. Sure, we'll listen to you when the police get here. Are you sure this is the only way out? I don't have a way straight down. Good. Shall I take him out, sir, and push him off the ledge? You could say it was an accident. No, Merkel, we'll let the law take its course if he's quiet. Of course, if he tries to escape, well, that's a different matter. See what I can do for him. Perhaps he would like some coffee, sir. Oh. Jim, about Albert. Sorry, Carol. I'm afraid he's just a wrong guy. You believe me, don't you? Of course I do, and so will the police. I'm not so sure. It's just my word against the evidence. Even the stars are against me. The professor said so. Now, don't get feeling like that. Everything will turn out all right somehow. Stars are no stars. Look, it's clearing up already. Maybe that's a good sign. I wonder which one is mine. You know, the uh, precarious one. <laughs> don't tell me you're falling for that hooey. You can't tell. There may be something to it after all. Oh. How can those little pinpoints influence your life? You can't even tell them apart. Not even through this thing, I'll bet you. It probably has plain old-fashioned window glass in it. Oh! What's the matter? Something in your eye? Look at it. Look at it. Nothing. It's, it's him. It's he. Oh, no! Wait for me! Jim! 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 Henry! Henry! Jim! Yeah, Carol? What is it? Upstairs in the tower. And the tower was awful with Uncle Thomas's body. Uncle Thomas in the tower? Oh, where is he? He's in there. He looks horrible. What? Right there. The telescope. It is Uncle Cyrus. Uncle Cyrus, Uncle you were up here all Something alone. What did you do? Something up? wrong? My telescope? Let me see. Remarkable. Very remarkable. I've never seen the moon's face so clear. The stuff. Get him out! Get him out! He'll ruin my lens! What kind of a joke is that? This is not a toy! Get him out! Henry! Oh. Henry! Oh. Henry! Are you all right? Mm -hmm. Albert was right. Someone must have used this passageway to kill Mona. Somebody else who got too nosy. I don't understand. Oh, you don't mean. Oh, surely you don't mean. You killed Mona and Mr. Gilman. I could have been alive, but she followed me and found out too much. But, but Henry, Uncle Cyrus liked you. He lied, the old hypocrite. I know. I read as well. He didn't think I'd get anything. But now I'll get it all. All of it, because I'll kill everybody who comes in my life. What was that? It sounded like Carol. Where did it come from? It's down there. Come on, tell him. We've got to. 
Someone caught me on the dough. Well, then, who bought me? The murderer. He's still loose. Down there. Hurry, he's got the girl. Come on, boss. Hey, what about me? Satisfactory will. Go on, Jim. That's all there was to it. Henry had read the will, knew he wasn't going to get much money, so he tried to reverse it. Gelman caught him reading it, so Henry killed him. Well, now that the old boy's resting peacefully in his vault, we're all set for life. Let's have a drink on it. Would anyone like a cup of coffee? No, no coffee? For Not for me, thanks. I'm going to have something stronger. Well, Carol, I... Carol, I guess my work is over here. I guess it's goodbye. I hope not, Albert. Maybe sometime, someplace. Go on in, pal. She's waiting for you. Wait. You go in there, you'll never get out. You'll be hooked for life. Brother. Who cares? Oh, 
Such fine coffee, isn't it? That was one body too many and, as I've already said, this will be the last episode of the Busan Midnight movie in this form. What does that mean? Even I don't really know. Maybe it means I start doing it as a monthly thing, maybe I do it in a completely different format, maybe there's never another episode at all. We'll see. There are a lot of things I'd like to do differently, including taking the time to write real jokes. Like there, that would have been a perfect place to put a joke, but I didn't bother to write one. However, I didn't want to wrap things up without saying how much fun I've had doing this over the past five months. This show has been a lot of work, but also a real joy. If you'd like to stay abreast of new things that I do, please subscribe to this channel, and quite sincerely, consomnia done, thank you for watching. And I'll remind you one last time to stay safe, stay inside, and stay spooky.